Well, the Olympics gave us this little bit of Last Supper drag show tranny vomit, and it really shouldn't surprise anybody. Nobody should be surprised that this is what we ended up with. After all, in the name of a neutral public square, we have allowed this kind of garbage into our lives. Well, welcome to today's episode of the Jason Modar Show, an amateur with the microphone providing social commentary from a biblical and masculine perspective. And today, as those of you who are watching on YouTube see on the screen, unfortunately you see this, it is a picture of the Last Supper mockery on display at the opening ceremonies of the 2024 Paris Games. I have a handful of things that I'm interested in saying uh, in response to what we saw in the opening games of the Paris Olympics. So why don't we go ahead and dive right into those. So the first thing is, referring to what I said at the opening about a public square, if you want a neutral public square, if you want plurality in your government. If you want any religion and every ideology and anybody with an opinion and with an ideology to a certain push to have equal neutral say in various matters of public and private importance, then you're going to get the filth and garbage that the Olympics gave us. You'll end up getting fat, disgusting, hideous, grotesque demon trannies, which demonstrates there really is no neutrality and that ultimately it is Satan who fills the power vacuum. Somebody's going to fill the power vacuum. If you attempt to empty the public square of any sort of authority or dominant ideology, in particular, if you attempt to empty it of the authority that we get from the scriptures, from the Bible and from the Christian faith, and from Yahweh, the triune God, it's ultimately Satan. He's going to be behind any sort of ideology that steps in and attempts to replace Christianity. But you'll get things like this. You'll get sexual degeneracy. You'll get an ideology like socialism or communism. You'll get postmodernism. You'll get things like we saw at the Olympics. There is no neutrality. Just like nature abhors a vacuum, so do politics, so does our public square. Somebody is going to come in and attempt to fill the void where Christ once was. Now, is Jesus Christ still the Lord of France? Well, in a sense, yes, of course. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus, for he is indeed, like I just said, Lord of heaven and earth. But in another sense, no, because France long ago rejected his rule and his reign. So who rules and reigns in his place? Well, one of those rulers right now in France and in many places across the West is, like I mentioned, sexual degeneracy. It's Romans 1 in real time. When a people reject God and chase after other sorts of things, when they reject the creator for the created. God inevitably will give them up to their desires and their passions and their unnatural unnatural wants and feelings. And that's what we're seeing happening in real time or what we saw happen in real time in the Olympics. All right, so second thing I wanna say in response to this is a response to those who have attempted to claim that they weren't mocking the Last Supper, they weren't attempting to mock Christianity, that this was actually a feast of Dionysius, not a parody of the Last Supper. They were, according to claims, not attempting to mock Christianity. Even if that's true, which it's not, but even if that's true, that doesn't really change much. It's still a fixture of abominations. It's still a tableau of filth and disgusting imagery. One of the trannies had their genitalia exposed on television. This is still an assault on truth, beauty, and goodness. This is still a falsehood, ugliness, and unrighteousness. This is still a celebration of sexual perversion and debauchery. Even if it's not an immediate or direct attack, that's what I'm looking for. Even if it's not a direct attack on Christianity, it's still gross, and it still ha has all of those aforementioned elements. But here's the thing. They were mocking Christianity. Anybody with two eyes could see it. I like how Doug Wilson put it in his blog and May blog entry from this last Monday. Here's what he says in there. The point of such blasphemy is not to offer us the vision of an alternative glory of another god or goddess, but rather to vandalize the image of God that we have been given. 
That's exactly right. One of the tranny movement's goals, whether they state it or they don't state it, is to mar and destroy the image of God, is to destroy that principle, that concept, that fact, that truth of reality that we get and that we understand that we know about from Christianity. Now, I would actually slightly disagree with Doug. I think they are attempting to offer us their version of what they call the true good and the beautiful. They are trying to give us a vision of an alternative glory, but nonetheless, I get what he's saying. He's right. They're primarily attempting to blaspheme Christianity. I was listening to part of George Grant's interview when he was interviewed recently by Cross Politic. He was talking about this ceremony and kind of the origins of where it came from, which actually in a way lends credence to the Dionysius theory that it was a feast of Dionysius, but not exactly how you would think. So during the French Revolution, when the Jacobins took power, according to Dr. Grant, one of the things that they did was they set up a, a feast, a Dionysian orgy feast that was a purposeful mockery of, you guessed it, the last supper. So this isn't even the first time that people in France have attempted to do this. And apparently during the late 1700s when the French Revolution was taking place and this debauched Dionysian feast that was a mockery of the Last Supper was set up, it too featured lesbians and trannies and many of the same people and features that we saw in the Olympic opening ceremonies. All right, so the last, I think third, we're on the third point now. The third and, and final response point I want to make about this is that the proper response to this is disgust. It should make us want to actually vomit to see men and women dressed up and made up in such a grotesque and hideous manner. Displays like this of so-called LGBTQ plus pride should make us physically ill when we look at them. Something that I've mentioned in previous videos along the same lines as this is that I used to have a, a co-worker well over a decade ago when I was working for Starbucks and she was a lesbian she was a butch lesbian clearly was not all that interested in looking like a feminine woman but still looked like a woman I could still tell she was a woman she was not transgender she wasn't attempting to look completely like a man she still had feminine features about her well fast forward to years and years later i saw a picture of her on social media and she had begun to transition take what's the hormone testosterone there it is begin to take testosterone and she had a, a mustache in the picture and it was physically revolting i had to shut off the image get away from it and no longer look at it because it made me vomit to see somebody who i knew as a woman it is still a woman who i knew as a woman worked with as a woman attempt to look like a man to the point where she was physically growing facial hair that should be our reaction to things like that now some people may want to retort that that's not kind we should just preach the gospel and calling this display and calling people who attempt to physically change their gender that to call them disgusting that that's unloving i disagree now if i were to have gone out of my way to chase down my former co-worker and say wow you're you're just a hideous disgusting tranny that would have been unloving that certainly would have been the wrong way to interact on an individual and personal level with somebody however Helping people see the depths of their depravity is incredibly loving. That's one of the most loving things you can do is to tell somebody the truth. And you can tell them the truth in love. You can speak about these things and say these things while still being loving. And helping people understand that what they're doing is disgusting and an abomination, and that's language of the scriptures, that's a good thing. So I experienced this myself. When I was able, one of the things that has helped me over the years with lust and formerly with pornography was getting an idea of just how disgusting lust and pornography are. That pornographic images, what that does to women, what that does to my mind, what that does to my view of women, what lust in general, so fornication of the heart or adultery of the heart when i was able to wrap my mind around that that's a disgusting abominable sin that god commands me to flee that it's a sin against my body to sin in those kinds of sexual manners when i was able to grasp okay th this is actually gross and wrong and hideous in so many ways that has helped keep me on the straight and narrow in 
more ways than almost really anything else has short of continual repentance for those kinds of things. So it's, it's, a, it's a mercy to point out to somebody the depths of the ugliness of their sin. Plus, giving fellow Christians a backbone and the confidence and the courage to call these perversions by perversions, to call these abominations abominations, to call these disgusting acts disgusting acts, like the Bible calls them, is very loving to your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. You're making sure they don't succumb to winsomeness, sinful winsomeness, where you just gloss over sin like J.D. Greer. Sinful winsomeness would be an example of when J.D. Greer called sexual sin things that God whispers about, or the sin of the 11th commandment, which is thou shalt be nice. It's a very loving and helpful thing that you can do to your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ to keep them strong, to keep them steadfast, and to say, no, you're not a bigot for reacting to this the way that you initially think you should react to it, which is horror and disgust. That's precisely how you should view these kinds of sins. And the fact that the majority, I don't want to say the majority, the fact that a lot of Church leaders, especially big name church leaders, did not do that, went the winsome route, went the be nice route, and glossed over these sins and refused to call them gross and disgusting is at least part of the reason why we're in the mess that we're in today. All right, well, thank you all so very much for swinging by and listening to another episode. I see that many of you are doing the thumbs up and slowly adding subscribers and things like that. Please continue to do so. And if you're on the podcast side of things, if you could leave a five-star review, that would be really helpful as well. And subscribe on whatever podcasting platform you listen on. All right. Well, thanks for swinging by. We'll see you next time. God bless.